Gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Keller, you are now recognized. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman Maloney, Ranking Member Comer, and our witnesses for being here today. This time last year, during this committee, Republicans warned Democrats of potential pitfalls with the American Rescue Plan's state and local fiscal recovery funds, or SLFRF. Uh, Republicans were not alone. Even President Obama's chief economic advisor, Larry Summers, cautioned against reckless spending that the then proposed funding would be three times as large as the projected shortfall. Unfortunately, Democrats ignored all words of caution and pushed $350 billion through committee after giving Republicans only 48 hours to review the text. Americans are now living with the direct ramification of the Democrats' spending spree with inflation topping 7.5%. Uh, Mr. Jaffe, at the time the SLFRF was passed, had all $4 trillion from the previous COVID funding been spent? No. How much, how much, do you know how much was still left at that point in time? Or? I think something on the order of, uh, of a trillion, but okay. I'm not uh, 100%. Uh, does, the, does the additional $1.9 trillion that Democrats injected into the American economy correlate with the 40-year high inflation? Definitely. I think one thing to point out uh, is you know, some analogies have been made to ARRA before, but that was during the recession. The 2009 stimulus was passed during the recession. ARPA was passed 11 months after we got out of the recession, so it was fueling a rocket that had already taken off. So that caused, that caused prices to increase because you had, uh, you had people with money to spend and we weren't producing goods? I mean, I guess I would say that exactly. because- Exactly, we were just pumping more money into the economy and it, was, uh, it, it wasn't really necessary to stimulate employment. In the chart that we saw um, uh, just a little earlier, you could see that employment was rising steadily after April of 2020. So we had many months of, of employment growth and then, and then this came and it was something that really was more inflationary than stimulative. Well, and we would have seen that, I'm sure we would have seen that growth uh, regardless who was in the White House because we had an economy where nothing was being produced or almost nothing was being produced prior. So to take credit for jobs that were coming back simply because people were going back to work, I think is, uh, I guess, the ultimate in, in how politics work. Um, you don't need to answer that one. Uh, uh, just another thing, Americans are paying more for everything, including gas, energy to heat your homes, uh, clothing. In retrospect, did the American Rescue Plan do what the Democrats claimed it would? Well, it certainly uh, didn't make that much difference to economic growth, at least the, uh, the state and local uh, funds in uh, mid-2021, because as I, as I mentioned uh, during my testimony, only $10 billion of the $350 billion was spent by July 31st. So uh, that money is really long-term money. They, they have until 2024 to obligate the money and 2026 to spend it. So it's just sort of this ongoing padding of, uh, of state and local government budgets that you know, in some cases may be needed, but in most cases aren't. So there's up to another four years to spend money that was voted on last year. That's correct. I wonder why uh, politicians would give up to four years, particularly even-numbered years, to spend money um, in economies to prop things up. I mean, I just, uh, particularly during the middle of a recovery, I mean, there's two things that happen. There's an election in 2022, there's one in 2024, there's one in 2026. Just it gives me pause to think why people would support doing that when we're supposed to be having a pandemic recovery, which we're, by all accounts, not wearing masks now, uh, coming out of it, so why would we continue to be spending money that far into the future unless there were some other, other reason to do it? And I can't, I can't come up with that reason right now. So. Uh, with that, I uh, yield back. Thank you. The gentleman yields back. Um, unfortunately, I have a, an announcement. Uh,
Governor Prisker has a hard stop at 12 because he has pressing business in the Illinois state government. Members may still submit questions for the record to Governor Pritzker. We thank the governor for his time and you are excused.